Hey guys, uh, it's Nathaniel. I'm back for another video. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys how we're going to use our package.json uh, to become an effective dev shop, in a sense, to code effectively with multiple people and to make sure you adhere to your own standards. Okay, so we've gone ahead, we've uh, gotten a decent package.json with all the good stuff that we need. Uh, we've gotten our dev dependencies, we've gotten our scripts that we've got. Um, the last video I just showed you how you could make sure these scripts work. Uh, so we went ahead, we made a first test. Uh, it's passing, whoop de doo took forever, unfortunately. One thing I wish Meteor would do is make this test suite run a little bit faster. Uh, it would certainly encourage usage of it. Okay, but I wanna show you how you actually use these things. So you see them. Uh, you, you can run these tests, you can imagine how this is slightly useful. Um, but why, why, I mean, why, why have these, uh, these tests, test app, test watch, all these sort of commands here instead of just sort of memorizing them? Um, one reason you can imagine is unification. You see both these scripts and these dev dependencies here, they mean your dev environment and the scripts that everyone runs are gonna be uniform. So if you're working with a couple of people, they're all gonna be the exact same. And when you run one of these commands, it's gonna probably operate in the same way. Uh, and again, if you're running across different operations or operating systems, you should probably use Cloud9 or something like that, but it's for another video. Um, the next thing uh, that it can be used for is making sure code consistency, okay? So, you know, we talked about how we can go ahead and lint our code, make sure it all conforms to that exact same style guide. We can go ahead and test our code and make sure it all conforms to those exact same tests. But we want to ensure this happens. We want to make sure Everyone using our code, everyone that commits to our repo, everyone that makes pull requests or, or everyone that pushes code, all conform in the exact same way. How do you do it? Um, it the code that we're writing this time is incredibly simple. Um, it's, I think, two lines. Uh, we go ahead and we add this pre-commit, and then we go ahead and add one uh, dev dependency. Okay. So we've got Husky right here. Okay. Um, so we can just add this right there. Okay, that's it. That's, that's all the code that we're writing. Uh, we're adding one dev dependency. You can add this by just adding it into the dev dependencies, or you can go ahead and, and do this. If you add it into the dev dependencies, you're gonna have to npm install it. So, uh, uh, but uh, the, the code that we've actually written, not adding dependencies, is a single line. It's pre-commit, uh, it's, that's, that's the name of the script, and we've got npm run lint uh, silent. Okay, so what does this do? Um, what this does is it ensures code quality. Okay, it ensures code style. And there's two ways to do this. One is locally, and one is globally. We've implemented the local version right here. So what this will do is we'll make sure this git pre-commit hook runs. So Git has a couple of hooks. This will, this will only work with Git if you're using some other type of version control. Then I suggest to use Git. Um, <laughs> so, so this this will this will make sure every time someone tries to commit code, it will go ahead and run this script. And if this script exits successfully, meaning that your code conforms to the standards, you'll be able to commit this code. If it doesn't exit successfully, uh, then you won't be able to commit it. Um, so, for an example, so we get, we went ahead and we npm installed. Let's let's try to do something silly, okay? So so now we've got in our main.js, we'll go ahead and put like uh, var y uh, equals seven, okay? This this will be it. Um, underscore. Uh, well, let's. Uh, So var y equals seven, uh, or or we could go ahead and just do. Uh, let's try. Let's try this. So const y equals seven, y equals five. Okay. Um, so this this is obviously not good. Uh, even even the var, I think we'll we'll go ahead and we'll throw one of these errors. Uh, even even this var y equals seven, we'll go ahead and throw one of these errors. Um, so this isn't this isn't generally good uh, JavaScript code, at least in ES6 land. Uh, there's no reason you should be using var anymore. You should be basically just using let. So if I go ahead and I try to make a commit, uh, what's going to happen? So if I go ahead, I try to make a commit. Um, git commit dash m. Uh, uh, this 
uh, should uh, fail. Okay. You'll notice one thing happens right before. Uh, we hit this pre-commit hook. We run our lint. And then when this fails, it will go ahead and say, hey, you, you can't commit this. Uh, hook, uh, whatever, husky pre-commit fails. You got some problems. Uh, unexpected var, you should use letter const instead. All var declarations must be on the top and a y is assigned and never used. So that's, it's obviously shit code. Um, on the other hand, if we were to delete this, uh, it would let us commit with no problem. Okay, so so that's that's the fundamental idea. By adding this in, this means all people that are gonna be making local commits are gonna be forced to run this. Then again, they can you know, quote unquote hack anything done on the client side can be quote unquote hacked, um, which will mean that they can, they can go ahead and make these commits without it, without it happening, which is why we'll do a remote version, a server version uh, in a little bit. And that's generally called continuous integration. Um, but why, why did we do it this way? Okay. So, so a lot of people uh, might be reminded of tools such as uh, Grunt or Gulp, um, other type of schools, or might be unfamiliar with why we use um, our uh, package.json in order to implement this pre-commit hook. Um, or why didn't we actually write it into Git, right? Uh, where, where hooks actually belong. Um, so we can go ahead and check out where, where's the actual pre-commit. Uh, pre-commit, right? It's kind of interesting. Uh, this pre-commit is actually filled for us, fortunately. Uh, Husky pre-commit failed, right? Um, but why, why, why didn't we just write this ourselves? So this, this brings me to the final point that I just wanted to talk about. Um, so Husky, Husky is Git hooks made easy. So if you're using npm scripts, if, if you're using your package.json in order to actually do this, uh, Husky, Husky is basically a great way to do it. It will allow you to make all these Git uh, hooks, and you, you can check them all out here on your uh, .git uh, file. You've got a patch, uh, I don't know, pre-rebase, all, all these stuff. Uh, we're we're going to be using basically to pre-commit and pre-push. Um, so you can do all these right here. So pre-commit npm test, pre-push npm test, you, you can imagine what we're going to be doing in the future. Um, and Husky will allow you to do it using an npm script. But why, why use an npm script? Um, so I've included two articles here um, about why you should use npm scripts instead of grunt gulp or something else. Um, and I, I recommend you read them. Uh, these are somewhat old, but I find them incredibly useful. Um, so some of the reasons they, they mentioned here, and this is something I felt as well, uh, with, with grunt and, and gulp, you're, you're going to have incredible bloat. Uh, you're going to have these massive config files that for the most part are doing simple stuff. Um, next the thing is relying on plugins. Uh, any time people come up with uh, a new awesome pre-build, pre-test, something very cool, you, you're going to have to wait for someone to actually write a wrapper for, for Grunt and Gulp. Uh, separate pane and updating, this, this also is there. Um, the, the next big thing that, that I think is, is left here is that people think the command line tools are hard. And they are. They are, but they're incredibly useful. Um, so one of these big misconceptions with NPM scripts is that you require strong command line skills in order to operate them. But the deal is, we didn't. Uh, the only thing that we did in order to make this NPM script run is we installed Husky. And the idea is that NPM, at least at the time this article was written, it's probably even a bigger gap at the moment, has 227,000 packages for it, whereas Grunt and Gulp don't. So for those new, uh, NPM scripts are a great way to actually implement this type of feature. Uh, if you want all of your developers to be running the exact same type of lints before they commit their code, this is an awesome feature to add. Uh, it adds maybe 10 seconds to the commit time. But the number of commits that you should be doing, it really shouldn't matter. I mean, it'll come up to maybe a minute per day. But it'll save you headaches in the future, believe me. Um, and the next thing is that there are other tools to do this. You could use Grunt or Gulp. Uh, and, and for those that are actually experts in doing this, uh, I, I recommend you just, it's, uh, these, these types of tests are extremely terse, uh, very parsimonious. Uh, they're not as verbose. They don't require a ton of, uh, extra toolage to, to sort of implement. They, they mean new programmers on your team can easily do this stuff. So it makes it seamless. 
Um, so that's a lot. It's a lot of stuff that we've talked about, but just two lines of code. So after we're going to go ahead and do this, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and add some more features. So we, we've made a pre-commit hook. Uh, let's go ahead and make uh, a few more. We're going to be doing some pre-pushers, and then we're going to be doing a commit message uh, uh, pre-commit hooks. Um, okay. Thanks a ton. Uh, always a pleasure. And I'll see you guys next time.